The Stones threw a party for us in London. They threw a big dinner party after our show. And Keith was walking around with his arm around me, just chatting me up. He was a wonderful man, really wonderful man. And he goes, are you hungry? And we're in this giant ballroom in the American Hotel. There's no tables, no chairs, nothing. I go, Keith, I just finished the show. You know I'm starving. This is the Little Feet Radio Show. Our guest today is Mr. Kenny Gradney. Welcome, everybody. I see Doug. I see Kenny. I see Scott. Uh, we've got a number of people that have their video turned off. Uh, you're welcome to turn it on. And tonight, our special guest is Mr. Kenny Gradney. Thank you. Good to be here. To be where. <laughs> there you are. Uh, when we last spoke in September... My goodness, thank you so much for doing that back then. Uh, but it was before you had played live with Tony Leone and the By Request Tour started November 11th. It ran to February. And then I think you did Feet Camp in Jamaica. Uh, the Waiting for Columbus Tour yeah. started in March. And right now you're on a short break, correct? Yeah, I'm going to leave Wednesday. We're going to COVID kicked in somewhere in the middle of the tour. So we had to cancel three shows. And I think that's what we're going to go and fix right now. So I take it that's probably why you're still going to be in a bubble for the these next few shows, correct? Yeah, because we were coming out of the bubble and um, boom, you know, bubble or no bubble, it's there. Yeah, well, I guess it's in some parts of the country more so than others. But, uh, you know, while yes. people are, are coming online, I want to take just a quick break, Kenny. Uh, I've got a tune that I'd like to play just to, to remind people of uh, one of the songs that you're credited on, which I don't think we got to play at our last time you were with us, but I, I felt remiss for that. So if you, if you want to take, if, can you give me just a few minutes while people are joining to play this one song? Absolutely. Will they say Indeed, time loves a hero. Even if you get COVID, you can be a hero. <laughs> uh, Kenny, True. We've, uh, we have about a dozen people here in the uh, Zoom and uh, about uh, another 10 or so that are watching on Facebook at the moment. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, we just heard that uh, you're still traveling in a bubble. Is there a way if somebody brought some merch to a show they wanted to get signed? Is that something you all have figured out? Get it through the bubble? <laughs> um, kind of. Uh, one of the girls will bring it in and we sign it. That's, that's probably how it's done now. Okay. That so that's what good. we've been doing. Because we've been signing merch for other people. Michelle is a young lady who is working with us now. And she brings all that stuff in and... You know, we want to sign everything. We want to be everywhere. You know, we want to hang. We just can't, you know. So as soon as we get sick, we got to stop. Well, it, it's certainly been challenging. And we don't want to stop. And, and we do appreciate you keeping on. Uh, and certainly with uh, Tony and Scott, it's been, uh, must be, be different. Uh, it's great. Nothing is the same. It, there, it'll never be the same. But it's great because these guys are really great musicians and they've studied the music their whole lives. And it, it just it shows when they play it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a different groove and you got to carry on the music, you know, any the best way you can. And that's what we're doing. Excellent. And that's the key is to just keep it going. Well, I think when you were on the show last time, you said um, regarding the fan, uh, you said about Tony, I bet you dollars to donuts, he can't play it. He, he had his troubles, you know. It's not an easy song to play. It's, it's in seven, it's in nine. It depends on what part you're playing. He could play the groove, but once we start getting into it, you know, he had his share of troubles, but he played it better than I ever thought he would. Very good. But he, you know, he's a jazz drummer who started playing rock and roll. He's, he's a seasoned veteran, man. He's, he's really good. 
Excellent. He's really good. And Scott's been doing a heck of a job as well, from what I can see. He's Scott born leader, you know. He just jumped right in and just, you know, he's been he's been a pro for a long time. He toured with the Greg Allman band and had his own band. And it's 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 great. It's very comforting to have guys like that, you know. You just start playing. It's it's not a problem. It's not hasn't been a problem from the very beginning. It hasn't been a problem. Excellent. From what I, the few shows that I've been to, there's some really outstanding musical moments. Definitely. I mean, every night you you go up on stage, there's not a problem. I mean, everybody knows what they're doing. It's just a lot of fun. I've never seen Billy at so in, at ease, you know, with what he's doing. He's just really comfortable and happy. It's it's amazing. It's really great. These guys are really good. And and doing the uh, Waiting for Columbus album every day. And it's it's really it's you know, it's really made it easy because it just gets better and better and better. You know, they know just so many songs. It's unbelievable. Oh, but they found an album. I'm trying to think of the name of the album. Scott's come running in one day and he goes, I found this album. I've never seen this album before. And I'm trying to remember which one it was. And it was one of the middle albums that we did. Um, a studio we'll album die. or a live and, one? Uh, I, I don't know if it was the one we did at um, one of the companies, but it, it's, a, it's a great album, a lot of great tunes. And they're picking all the songs that they want to learn on it and everything. It was, it was really funny. We started laughing. Kenny, when uh, Bill was on the show, he t- described uh, Little Feet as in three acts. And he said that the first act mm-hmm. was the Lowell years. And then the second act started with uh, Let It Roll. And the third act, of course, being Tony. I'm talking, I'm talking about what Billy called one of the Act Two albums. Okay. And when you were, got back together in 87, of course, Let It Roll came out in 88. Then Representing the Mambo. Yeah. Shake Me Up. Yeah. Under the Radar. Yeah. Actually, we got back together in 86. Right. I, I'm talking about when we you started got back, working which... in 87. And in 88, the album came out. To let it roll. That was the first album that came out. Yes, yes. So great and stuff. That's you, all I know. Because I want to share uh, something that came up on the Waiting for Columbus tour. I mentioned uh, magical musical moments, and I want to share this one with you. I don't know if you've seen this, but I'm hoping that it's going to be on that PBS special coming whenever it comes out. This was at ah, the. Okay. This was at the Ryman. Did that look familiar? Very familiar. He's amazing. He's just an amazing. We've been doing a bunch of stuff with him off and on. Yeah. I, I can't even begin to tell you what an incredible musician and person he is. Tommy Emanuel, he's, my he's goodness. He's a gem. He played at the Beacon in New York City with you all, didn't he? Yes, he did. He played in Jamaica with us, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So some amazing music going on. I'm very grateful for that unbelievable stuff that's going on right now and we're working on doing an album next year an album next year in mind to produce it and we're negotiating and um 
We'll see what happens. So you're going to have the PBS special. They, I heard it was this fall or something like that, right? That'll be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's got- just, there's a lot of good music on there. Charlie Martinez is doing our sound now. He's with Steely Dan. He's an mm-hmm. amazing sound guy. Amazing. We have all new crew guys, and they're really incredible people. Very good. And they do a wonderful job. Yeah, I said hello to Charlie at the at the rhyme and he had his hands full dealing with all the PBS people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it was all was I was waiting for all these guys to be climbing all over stage. And the guy comes up and they just start setting these little robot cameras around. I went, oh, that's interesting. And it made it really comfortable, made it real easy to do. It was fun. Very good. Chris Caffiero and his uh, crew have been doing these little cameras i think he's doing some videos like 10 camera shots and all that sort of thing too yeah the italian stallion he's awesome he does make some really great material for y'all he does really good work which which him and his crew they're amazing does does anybody before we start the next video how about do y'all have a question for kenny about uh the tour the new record they're going to be starting next year or hopefully be out next year it seems so far away a whole year away yeah Oh my goodness. Beautiful. That was, uh, t- what was that? 10 years ago? Something like that? 12 years ago, 2010. Wow. Sounded great. Uh, again, thanks to Chris. Paul was having problems so You could hear it in his voice. That was shortly after we lost Richie too. I know. They were both on the same road. Well, speaking of on the road, we're all looking forward to seeing you back on the road. I know some people have chimed up while that was going on. Uh, Scott says he's going to be in Seattle and Portland. Uh, Susan Stone says San Diego and Bozeman. And Mr. Gene, Asheville. Mr. Gene, I'll be at Asheville, too. Come by and say hello. Amy will be with me, and I'm going to be in Asheville's going to be nice. Yes, indeed. San Diego will be fun. I'm going to have my son there. As a matter of fact, we're going to spend the day together tomorrow. Wow. We're going to play golf. Excellent. He's an amazing young man. John, he's really cool. Excellent. So you see them in San Diego. That'll be fun. He was, he goes, every time I go to, um, he was there in 2019. He met Paul. He met the whole band. Excellent. A lot of catching and I up told to the do. band I, I, I had a son because my wife and I don't have any kids. So when I told them, I just found out I had a son. They were all very happy for me. Because we are a family. We've always been a family. It's my other family. Little Fee. And I see my family. The the Little Feet fans up in Canada are saying, uh, are they still not letting you in, Kenny? Yes. (laughs) They're going to let me in. They just, they want a lot of my money to get in. I don't get it. You know, I think I started, I think it started when they start talking about we have to protect our borders. They got insulted, I guess. You know, we closed our borders for a while. So now they're just, you know, they're going through their thing. I love Canada, man. I have so many great memories in Canada. One of the first places I toured was Canada with Delaney and, bon- with Delaney and Bonnie. We did the Strawberry Fields, which was a half a million people. You know, Jose Feliciano, he just drove up because he wanted to meet Delaney. And he came on stage and played with us. It was amazing. It was amazing. Wow. I love Canada. And I know uh, you're also in Northern Europe seems to be a, a, a little feet stronghold, including Great Britain yeah. and Japan. <laughs> Japan, because we we've done. I tell you, we played the Budokan in Japan with uh, Mr. Udo, who was a famous promoter there. Mm-hmm. He's the one that had Paul McCartney there when his wife put a bag of pot in his bag. Um, Oops. So we um, we we were playing all over and. We're playing at the Budokan and you and everyone had to sit. This was 75 with Lowell. Everyone had to sit and behave. And Lowell was a brown belt in Okinawa. Tay. He was very, very much into martial arts. And he looked like a sumo wrestler. So when we came on for the encore, he took his shirt off and he had his overall strap on. And he came out and he did the whole sumo routine, you know, <laughs> 
and the place went crazy. <laughs> you know, there's this whole thing. It's very, very big in the culture, sumo. And he put his hair up like a sumo wrestler mm-hmm. and he did this whole thing. And then he started doing the chant that they do in the middle of, of the thing. And they just, they went crazy. And then we went right in the will and it was pretty awesome. That's an amazing story. Thank yeah. you for sharing and I that. Play, we played there a bunch. Well, speaking of real black belt too. I have one more because I'd like to do a ballad tonight and I've got two to choose from here. Speaking of ballads, they, they want to do um, uh, Lafayette Railroad as much as possible. They love that song, Scott and Tony. One of their favorites. That's one of our ballads with no lyrics. Uh, speaking of ballads, since you called it, let me see if I can find it real fast. Y'all won't mind okay. if I go off script, right? I don't mind. You wrote it. <laughs> know it. Uh, it's, wrote a, it. it's a set list is what it is. So yeah. let's see. We're we always go off set list. That's right. Screw set list. <laughs> I've seen Paul pick up the set list and ball it up and throw it and just start playing. Oh, my goodness. Here, here we go. I remember one time Fred Tackett told me, you know what you do when you're playing a ballad? He says, stand still. Okay. <laughs> I can't, I can't stand still. I know. It's very different. And, and, and I'm not dancing. I just, I react to the music. I always have. Now, I think I saw videos from one of the recent shows where there was a sign at the front of the stage that says, no dancing, no standing. Is that true? Do you not? Does some some shows they don't allow dancing? That can't be true, is it? I don't know. We don't care about what people allow or don't allow. There you go. When we get there, it's our show. We do what we want. <laughs> nice. I never heard of that. Okay. No Great. standing, no dancing, no singing. Enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah. Yeah, so if somebody's standing up in front of you and you're in the audience, stand up too. There you go. Dance. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. So how about y'all? You all dance? How can how- you sit? How can you come to one of our shows and just sit? It's impossible. You can't. It's no. Because we'll just start playing faster and faster. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, uh, speaking of faster and faster, we're fast approaching the, the last bit of our show. I want to uh, put another poll up. Kenny's got more than an hour's worth of stories. I've got a lifetime of stories. And some some of the people that I think you guested with them, uh, you probably made their day in terms of stories that they're going to tell, including this fella here that's in this song. That's probably a song you can play in your sleep, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that was Absolutely. Mark. That was Mark. They all Kier. are, though. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm the lyric man. I'm the guy that knows the lyrics to all the songs. Because when I, saw- I first started learning songs, I I would learn the lyrics, and I would know where the verse and the chorus and everything was, and that's the way I taught myself. Mm-hmm. So naturally, when I learn songs now, even though I've studied music and got everything, I still the lyrics just stick to me and I know the, the format of the song. Because some of these songs are so strange, it's hard to know the format, like Rooster Rag. 
Well, that's a song that is very difficult, you know. And and another one is that sounds really easy and simple, but it's not. And that's uh, um, Billy's Oh Atlanta. It sounds real straight ahead, but it's there's a lot of stuff going on in there. That's you know. Yeah, I've got. I figured that one out too. It's it yeah. is very tricky. Yeah, there's all of them because they're all the songs are pieces. You know, all the songs are pieces. They're 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 not like people think we're we're a jam band because we play so much, but the songs themselves are structured a yeah. specific way. You know, and you you can't change them. Oh yeah, Fat Man is its own. Rock and Roll Doctor has its own. I mean, these these are some. Yeah. Dixie Chicken is a song. Mm-hmm. You know, although we just we've done. We beat that song up, man. <laughs> Richie used to call it the ode to poultry. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Yeah. The TDCS. Yes. Darn chicken song. <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> had a what couple a sense of humor he had. He was had a, so funny. Had a couple of questions come up in the chat. Maybe you can help. I out saw with- that. Susan <laughs> sent me a question. I didn't get quite catch it. I saw one for um, any rolling st- any stories around the Rolling Stones. I have a I have a Keith story when the Stones threw a party for us in London. A really nice party. Actually, it was in Holland. They threw a big dinner party after our show. And Keith was walking around with his arm around me, just chatting me up. He was a wonderful man, really wonderful man. And he goes, are you hungry? And we're in this giant ballroom in the American Hotel. There's no tables, no chairs, nothing. I go, Keith, I just finished the show. You know I'm starving. And he raises his hand and says, bring me table. And here comes the table, boom and bring me wine and bring me some steaks. And we sat there and ate steaks and drank wine. It was unbelievable. They brought this really incredible wine that he drank. We had a great time and people kept coming up and sticking drugs in his pocket, you know, oh my take them out and give them to me. And he go, I get my own drugs. <laughs> it was so hilarious. That's my, my favorite stone story. It's a true story. Excellent. And years later, we're playing Atlanta and he's out on his own tour. He's got Wadi and a bunch of the guys with him. And I come out of the hotel and I see this little uh, Chrysler van. And I didn't pay attention to it. And I turn to walk and I hear with this English accent, Mr. Gradney. And I turn around and there's Keith sitting in the front seat. And I'm like, wow, this dude knows my name, man. <laughs> it was very, you know, Excellent. he's a really nice man. He's always been a nice man to me. The first time I met him was with Delaney and Bonnie in 1969. We came, we were rehearsing at uh, SIR and we came out of the room and Keith was uh, shooting pool and Mick was sitting on the floor by the door listening. And Bonnie introduced me to him. Very nice. I got a couple more questions. Get away from the stones for a second. The next one was, there's a comment here about somebody said they saw you in a video singing a verse of the fan. Of the fan. Yeah. I sing the last verse in the fan. Very good. Billy can I think Billy can. He's, he's messing with me, making me sing <laughs> because they started holding up signs <laughs> in Jamaica. <laughs> Let Kenny sing. You were there, <laughs> right? So I do the last verse, but it's not much singing. I'm more talking than singing. Well, you know all the words. That's a, that's a good start. Oh, that, as, fa- as far as favorite songs to play with Richie, okay, Tony's great. Richie, to my, well, that was my favorite song to play with Richie. And, and he was the only, you know, we've only had three drummers, and Gabe couldn't play it. We literally had to play it in four with Gabe. But um, and Gabe was a great drummer. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Gabe was he had to be to play with us, you know, and um, Tony's a very good drummer. Play it. Tony plays it. No problem. Nine, seven. We have a lot of fun with it. A lot of fun. I enjoy playing it because it's, it's really a while. It's almost like a punk song, you know. Scott says that he thought you had, they had to pay you more if you sang. Did you get any royalties? 
<laughs> oh, I think they would pay me less when I sing. <laughs> I should pay them. Uh, anyway, I can't sing. I don't. We're, know. we're reaching the end of our hour, and I really want to thank you. I know it just seems like we just got started. Listen, I enjoyed. You call me anytime. I'll be back. Excellent. Appreciate it. Uh, I do have, I do have one bonus tune that I want to play since you've been doing the waiting for Columbus tour. This is actually recorded uh, in 1977. It was at the rainbow theater. You played four shows there. I know one they called the black Wednesday. Um, but this was <laughs> the fourth show. You want to talk about the black Wednesday, but real fast, you know, you know what I'm talking about? No. no. <laughs> This was, it was the, the only show Richie was sober. He was the only one sober. How's that? <laughs> there you go. This show is the very last song of that fourth show. It did not make Waiting for Columbus. Let's see if I got this going. Oh, and there's this one bit. I don't know if it's if it was planned or just happened, uh, but it's about two, two minutes in where it looks like Paul's cutting one of Lowell's strings. Maybe you could tell me if that's made up on the spot or done they planned. Here we go. Thank you so much. Can you tell us real quick, was that uh, a bit or did it something just happen on the spot? Or you don't know? Uh, I think, I don't know. That was Paul. That was all Paul there. <laughs> you know, I just, I saw it. I was working on the other end of the stage. I think they were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bunch of fighting going on there because one was too high and the other one wasn't. And I don't know. Yep. Lowe was kind of screwing up. He was pretty high. And you had Mick Taylor there, too, that night, right? Those were the days. Oh, my goodness. I never got that high, by the way, ever. Very good. Well, I thought it was a Hollywood bit because, you know, Lowell was always doing the Hollywood thing. He told me his favorite was like the Adam yeah, Costello's he, movies where the ending was always just this madcap rush of people to, to finish the movie. <laughs> Lowell did some weird things. One year he gave, gave us all... Uh, Sony recorders for Christmas and then he took it out of our checks <laughs> oh my goodness. and and so low uh, Paul saved up all year all of his cigarette lighters and they were all empty and he put them in a shoe box and he wrapped it beautifully like this beautiful gift and he gave it to Lowell and Lowell's like, oh man. And he, you know, he's patting him on the back and he walks away and Lowell opens it. It is a box of old cigarette lighters. <laughs> and he kept trying them to see if one of them worked. None of them worked. <laughs> That's funny. They just did things to each other all the time. They were like the Marx Brothers, the three of them, Richie, Paul, and Lowell. They were the Marx Brothers. Excellent. Well, hopefully down the road, you're going to have some stories to tell with Tony and Scott. And of course, Fred is just Mr. Rock right there. So far, nothing. They're yeah. just straight ahead, you know. Wait, wait till us fans get yes. around. Then you'll be in, when, up to it. <laughs> whenever we have a day off, Scott cooks up a great pasta dinner. That's about it. There you go. Every time. 
I hope for you'll have many p- great pasta dinners coming in the future. And I'm going to, I so s- hope so. I'm going to sign off now, folks. It's been a great hour and I'm really grateful for all showing up to talk with Kenny. And if we're, if we're good, maybe he'll come back and do it again sometime. Absolutely. Anytime you want me, just let me know. God bless everybody out there and keep the feet moving. That's about all we have for tonight, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Be well, stay safe, and enjoy Little Feet.